Good evening, dear listeners, and welcome to Ghastly Tales. I hope you're all filled with festive cheer for the holiday season. I know I certainly am. And throughout the month of December, you'll be getting four original Christmas episodes in your stockings. Because Christmas is all about giving. And what better gift is there than a frightening tale or two? Tonight's story is set on Christmas Eve. A short little nibble of Christmas fear, wrapped up in a big red bow. Open it up and enjoy yourselves, but always remember those less fortunate than yourselves, for it is always cold on Christmas Eve. It should have been the perfect Christmas Eve. A thick layer of snow had floated down gently from the sky all day. Wishing my colleagues at the office a Merry Christmas, I put on my long winter coat and scarf and walked out into the snow. It crunched beneath my feet, and as it did so, I was reminded of being a kid, of how special it was when the snow came. Then, I thought about my own two kids back at home, waiting for me with my wife. That made me smile. That was, until someone grabbed hold of my arm from a darkened doorway. I recoiled at the sight of a homeless man in front of me, his face worn and grey, no doubt from countless nights sleeping in the cold and his long matted beard gave both the impression and stench that he hadn't bathed in an age. Spare some change, he said, coughing. Opening my wallet, I hoped to find a small note, but all I had there were three twenties. I'm all for charity, especially at Christmas, but as the man looked down at the larger notes, I had to dash his hopes. Sorry, I don't have anything smaller, I said. But it's cold on Christmas Eve, he said. I didn't know what else to do, so I simply said sorry and walked away. It was 6pm and the sun had long since set. The streetlights lit the way, and as I walked towards the outskirts of town, I took in the silence. No cars, no people. Everyone was home, I suspected, wrapping presents or preparing a feast for Christmas Day. Considering how cold the air was, I was looking forward to doing the same when I got home. As an icy wind blew down the street towards me, I stopped for a moment to adjust my scarf, pulling it closer to me. Looking up at a street lamp, flakes of snow silently moving in front, I saw a bird sitting on top of it. It looked like a crow, or a bird with black feathers at least, but it was difficult to tell. The street light was overpowering, and so the details of the bird melted into the brightness set against the jet black sky. It appeared strange to me, more so because of its apparent size than anything else. But for the first time since I'd left the office, the feeling of festive cheer had completely abandoned me. Looking up at the bird, I now felt an emptiness, a loneliness even, on that forlorn street. I felt sorry for it, all alone on Christmas Eve. And just as those thoughts passed me by, It made a noise, something akin to a squawk. The sound unnerved me, and it evoked in me a sense of unease. Instinctively, I looked back towards where I had come, almost expecting to see someone creeping towards me. But on that snow-covered street, we were alone. A chill seeped through the loneliness, and as it did so, I felt my bones grow colder, and so I continued onwards, trying to fill my mind with thoughts of my family, 
of a comfy armchair waiting for me in front of the television. Maybe a drink or two to keep the cold at bay. A noise startled me from above. At first I thought it was the wind, but it was in fact only wind-like. There was something off about the sound. Looking upwards, I saw that I was standing directly underneath another streetlight. Flakes of snow danced above me, resting on my eyelids and face. As I wiped them away, I could see it. The bird. It was sitting directly above me again, on this a different lamppost. Yet I still couldn't make out its detail, and now I was beginning to be unsettled by the size of the thing. I couldn't be certain, as the street light and snow blended together to warp what I could see. Staring at the bird, for a moment, it would appear to be the shape and size one would expect. But when it shifted its weight slightly, I could swear there was more to it, its black outline more substantial, confused with the night sky. Thoughts deep within me unstuck my feet and pushed me on. Get home, they said, leave this place. I decided to listen, picking up the pace. I walked further down the street, but as I passed each streetlight, I heard that same noise above. Like the wind, or was it feathers? Another thought reared its ugly head. It sounds more like cloth rustling in the darkness. That impression frightened and overcame me. I began to walk faster, yet again the noise above sounded, as if the thing, the bird, whatever it was, was moving from post to post. It's following me, my thoughts offered, and at that I ran as fast as I could, my footfalls sliding in the snow. The night air stung my lungs, and yet as I passed each street light, the noise of cloth of wind, of feathers above, followed. Move faster, another thought came. And I did, around street corners, between parked cars, across usually busy roads, now silent in the snow. Finally, after several minutes, the noise had ceased. I had outrun it. As I reached my home street, I could run no longer. Standing still, I caught my breath, just for a moment. Looking across the street, our Christmas decorations twinkled in the garden. All I could think of was warmth and of the comforts of home. Something cold then touched the back of my neck, and I felt what I can only describe as talon-esque fingers, hard yet knuckled, reaching down underneath my collar and touching my spine. I let out a scream and reached behind me, flailing at whatever was there, out of reach, out of sight. But without laying my eyes on it, I knew the truth. The thing that had been following me had grabbed hold of my coat at the back with talons or fingers or something else entirely. For how long it had been grasping onto my coat, I could not say. Pulling at it, I could not dislodge it, and so I did only what I could. I threw my coat to the ground, leaving it in the snow. Running across the street, I reached the gate to my garden, but in my eagerness to get inside to safety, I slipped on a piece of ice and fell sharply onto my back on the ground. That was when I saw it. Standing there across the street from me was not an animal or a thing but a man, the homeless man I had met outside the office. He pulled on my long winter coat and did the buttons up. He then looked at me and said, It's cold on Christmas Eve. Grinning from behind his matted beard, he then walked away from me, down the street, back to whatever obscure place he'd come.
I hope you enjoyed tonight's story. You'll find it and three other macabre tales of the festive season in my book, The Horrors of Christmas. If you'd like to support the show, you'll find links to my books in the show notes below, as well as our YouTube channel and all of our audio content via iTunes and Libsyn, where you can leave a review of Ghastly Tales, which helps spread our darkness to the uninitiated. Well, the snow is falling outside. Time to go home once more. But should you hear the sound of rustling cloth or feathers above in the winter sky, do not look up. Quicken your pace, and when inside, be thankful that you made it home in one piece. Unpleasant dreams, dear listeners. And we'll meet again next time for another Ghastly Tales.